All right, so I guess we get started here. Welcome everybody to our Pilates Rounds group. My name is Zaina and I am here at Synergy Plus in San Rafael, California. And I have Genevieve here today. She's gonna to be our star teacher of the day. So I was gonna give you a little tidbit, uh, something that I've been working on this week with my clients, which is stance, how to connect to the floor. So Pilates is a lot laying on your back does a lot um, strengthening everything but really there's not a lot in Pilates that stands you up except for maybe the Pilates push-up as far as the mat work goes in the other apparatus we have a lot more of that but um, especially the chair which is one of my favorite places to explore the standing work but even here without any props we can work on a little bit of that standing form so I'm just going to try and connect your feet to the floor and then I'm going to Turn it over to Genevieve. So I have people just stand in parallel. So just kind of stand up in parallel. I'm going to take my weight first and just sort of shift it to the balls of my feet and let my heels float. You could even kind of bounce a little bit if you're in that forward position. Should feel like your legs are on strong. Um, if I get floppy legs, it changes my whole posture here, right? If, it, if the knees start to relax. So what I want is that nice straight upright posture. Taking it onto the balls of the feet tends to pick up the center and pick up the body a little taller. And if you take that to the back of the neck, you can actually extend through the occiput at the back of the neck, really lengthening up through the top here as well. So maybe just do a few rocking back and then just coming up to the toes, rocking back. And then when you're coming up to those toes, really spread out the toes and use the whole width of your foot. So we get in shoes and our toes get squashed, but we have a lot more balance potential if we have some spread of those toes. Right, and then go ahead and stop with your heels down, more weight to the front of your foot than the back. And staying in that parallel, I want you to pick up all your toes off the floor. So if you do a mild version of that, you don't feel much, but if you really try and pull up those toes, Spread out the ball of the foot, the balls of all your toes apart, and then you should feel like the arch of your foot starts to lift up a little bit, just from lifting those toes. So keep that arch lift, lower the toes, and then go ahead and lift up the toes again. So really lifting up, I've got a lot of energy through the feet, and I can look down and see that my normally flat feet are, have kind of an arch there now. And I want to make sure that my ankles aren't rolling. I'm not rolling outside. So that ball, the big toe, has to stay right on the ground there. And then I'll relax my toes and lift up one more time. And then relax the toes. So the third part of that is that if I keep those feet in parallel, but I imagine that I'm going to pull, well, I'm actually pulling energy with my heels towards each other. So even if I don't go anywhere with my feet, which I actually don't want you to turn the feet, I'm going to just pull that energy through the heels. So that's going to activate my inner thighs. If I then pick up my toes but keep the ball, the big toe down, I'm really now picking up those arches, wrapping around and lifting up. Here now, I should be able to hopefully continue that motion up through my center and out through my head. So really alive in the legs, feet. Lower the toes down, keep that arch up in the foot, and you can keep that sort of spiraling happening just to activate back in through here in this direction, going backwards, and imagine that spiral all the way down through your feet. So this is a great active way to be, stand. You should be able to, in this position, if you keep that wrap, should make it really easy to do things like lifting up your leg, extending out, right? I should be really well balanced if I can stay on that ball, the big toe, right on either side, should really give me freedom, right, with that lift. If I keep on this hip, which I just didn't do, <laughs> if I keep on this hip, right, you can explore that, really keeping that leg connected to the floor, the arch lifted, and the foot alive. So that is my tidbit for today, and I'm gonna hand it over to Genevieve. Hello everyone. Um, so today we're gonna do a little bit of work with the TheraBand. I've been kind of playing around a little bit with um, how to use that as, as a prop for people at home um, who may be missing the apparatus work a little bit. Um, so you wanna make sure you have that handy for most of the stuff that we're doing. Um, I have taken to starting Zaina's classes, or my classes, the way Zaina did with the 
and under the feet to get the shoulders down. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Um, I think this is a shorter one. Do you need okay. this? Here, take this out too, but I know. Sure. So let's just start there. Both the feet on. We can get our nice, beautiful stance that we just worked on. And I like to wrap in and drop the shoulders down. Add in that turning of the palms forward by pulling the shoulder blades a little closer together on your back. And then releasing. And again, turning forward, growing a little taller out of your feet, through your hips, through your waistline. And release. And again. And we'll just do one more here. Holding. And then I like to just do a nice little head circle. So we're going to drop the right ear toward the right shoulder. And up, and we'll go around the other way. Drop the ear, turn the nose. Sorry, add that uh, shoulder roll back if you dropped it. I just like this because it kind of pins people's shoulders in the right position, and then you can get into that next stretch where they're not pulling their shoulders forward to get there. <clears throat> okay, so after that... Um, keeping your band handy, we're going to head on down to the mat, lying on your back. You can grab your ball for um, a little support and stability. So for those who don't know, my body is the hypermobile type. Um, and so most of what I teach, I, ha I, I cue some modifications for that. Um, and I may do something slightly different one side to the other just because of that. Um, so just bear with me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with our breathing in neutral. I also um, have been playing a little bit with my cueing for breathing and coccyx curl. Um, so I'll just share a little bit of that today. And if it works for you, great. If not, then, you know, it's just something to keep in the back of your mind, maybe. Um, and this one for breathing in neutral, I took a little bit from Teresa's cue, her class weeks ago. Um, so we're going to inhale and we're going to think of a chocolate souffle. So we're going to inhale and let the belly rise. And then we're going to exhale and the center of that souffle is the belly button. And that is what starts sinking first, coming down toward the spine. And then we inhale, souffle rises. And exhale, it falls. Again, always thinking about the center of that souffle, right? That's how it always falls down, is right from the middle. And then it's sitting in a dish which does not change shape. So the base of that dish is your spine and that structure that's in contact with the mat, you know, your hips, your thoracic spine. And then bringing this into coccyx curl, I've been playing with coccyx curl a little bit, um, thinking about the belly button again and cueing from the belly button. So that same idea of dropping the belly button in, the souffle falls, and then the center of that souffle gets even heavier and falls even further toward the floor, breaking a little bit that mold that you had at the, of the dish. So it's just going to pull down and bend it a little bit and then inhale, release. So then thinking about the coccyx curl, bending that, that mold a little bit, and then drive the coccyx curl with the belly button, either by um, kind of lengthening the belly button toward your tail and facilitating the shape that way, or alternatively, pulling the belly button toward your heart and facilitating the coccyx curl that way. So I, I mentioned these two different ways just because they feel very different on my body, and I'm not sure which one feels best for you or for your clients, but just something to think about. And I'll just do one more like that. And then I'll take this into bridge, rolling up, and rolling back down. We'll just do a few here to warm up and then we're gonna get the band involved.
really rolling vertebra by vertebra. So as you come back down, the ribs come down first and the tail is the last thing. Noticing which points get a little stuck and try to spend a little extra time there. Okay, go ahead and grab your band. And make sure it's nice and wide. You wanna get it uh, broad and place it right across your hips, right across the hip flexor points. <clears throat> and we're going to hold on to the ends, make a little tiny bit of tension here. You don't need a whole lot just yet. And then reach the hands away, so fingertips toward the heels. So already you can feel a little bit of work in the lats, reaching against the uh, band. And then we're gonna, again, scoop the tail up, roll into your bridge, and this just has a little extra pressure um, downward, so a little more work for your hips, for, for your glutes, and then rolling back down. Good. And you can play with the tension here. I like not a whole lot of tension just because I just like the, the feeling of feedback, I guess. And you can feel kind of what your hips are doing against that band. And we're gonna press up, we're gonna hold up this time and we're gonna do little pulses into the band. Pulsing up and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Nine and 10 and rolling back down. <sighs> okay, one other thing with ridging, you can get rid of the band. I'm just gonna mention this because it's something that I've um, modified for myself <clears throat> with wiggly hips. <clears throat> We're gonna roll up into your bridge and hold up. So this is for a lot of that single leg stuff. Um, while I'm working towards single leg uh, and being stable there, instead of letting the um, unweighted leg go completely, I'll just shift my weight onto say my left foot and I'll lift up that right heel. And so there's a little bit of pressure still going through that right foot, but it's largely in my left glute and then I can put that back down and shift over to the other side. And so that just feels a little bit safer for me. Um, and if you have clients who are wiggly like that, um, it just feels a little safer and like I can control how much weight I, I um, load into each glute, hamstring, all of that. Okay, and then we'll roll back down. Okay. Um, let's get the abs on a little bit, shall we? So, legs in tabletop. Dropping the belly button in. I always like to just begin with a little um, predict the load, reaching the feet out about three inches or so, and then inhale, bringing it back. <sighs> bringing this belly button idea back. Um, I've been cueing in my own mind, dropping the belly button in, of course, but as the feet reach away, I think about the same amount of um, reach happening in my belly button in the opposite direction. So that idea of pulling your belly button up into your rib cage toward your heart a little bit. And sort of that counter weight that you're making there. Last one here. Okay, single leg stretch, one knee in towards your nose, extend the other away and switch and switch and switch. Our head is still down. One more each side. Bringing the legs back to tabletop. One toe taps the, the mat, bring it back up and other side. And tap and tap.
Last one. We're finishing out your set. <clears throat> okay, bringing the feet back down. We're gonna come into upper ab curl next. So taking the uh, head and hands, finding that interlaced uh, finger position where you can really cradle your head there. And then we're gonna uh, chin nod, kind of scooping the chin inward, lengthening out the back of the neck. And then using that same idea, lengthen out the rest of your spine. So reaching the whole spine through the top of your head. And then closing the ribs and continuing up and rolling back down. We'll do 10 here. Really controlling the way down. Last one, and back down. Okay, arms are on a little bit. I wanna get a little more um, band work in here. So we're gonna take the band, loop it around the left ball of the foot, or ball of the left foot, however you wanna think about it. Okay. <clears throat> So we're getting it in the right place. It's like half the battle. Okay. So we've got that leg reaching up toward the ceiling. I like this because um, it gives you a little of that hamstring stretch, but you don't have people necessarily wrenching themselves out of position because they've got the, the length of the band as well, the stretchiness of the band. So we're going to reach through this leg. We're in parallel, reaching down toward the floor and inhaling back up. So just sort of like your... Um, Leg lowers on reformer, finding that length. And encouraging the um, hamstring and glute to kind of start pulling this down, along with the reach through the leg. Taking this into a bicycle motion. So reach down, bend the knee, and come up and around. So an added benefit to this that I noticed is that it kind of works a little bit like your footwork on the reformer as well. If you keep the ball of your foot reaching away and reaching the same direction. So if you don't let it stay, um, if you don't like walk your ankle, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last one here. And we can reverse coming around. Also find uh, the change in uh, like kind of like with the springs, right? You've got more tension happening at one point versus another. It kind of makes the knee do interesting things. I don't know, I was noticing that a little bit. Okay, let's come into turn out. Same idea, got one uh, end in each hand, and we're gonna do like a half frog leg. Okay, so we're gonna press out straight and come back. So controlling the hips here, um, you know, kind of like when we took Heidi's class a few weeks ago, um, she had a lot of notes about that hip stabilization. And for me here, I like my left hip wants to go crazy. So this is quite an exercise for me and it may not feel like it for you. Um, but just if you have one of those clients, might be a good one to think about. We're gonna reach out and hold and take both feet in. So we're gonna do our double um, frog leg here. Reaching the legs out, take um, your straps in the middle so that you've got your um, band going in between your knees. I mean, in and reaching out. 
So having both legs out, of course, is gonna be a little more challenging for the abdominals. So not letting that leg go as low. Last one here. Okay, taking this foot down, moving over to the right, starting with our leg lowers again. Okay, both hips equally weighted here, reaching through the ball of the foot. And just do one more here. Not entirely sure how many we did on the other side, I'll be honest. We're gonna go through into our bicycle. So again, trying to keep the ball of the foot pointing kind of the same direction this whole time. So you can get a little work in the ankle and that stabilizer. Trying to hold the knee uh, pointing in the same direction the, same, uh, the whole time as well. So kind of straight and not letting it wobble in and out. Reversing. I guess one other important cue here is I feel like a lot of people are gonna start to get into their neck and shoulders with this arm position. So just reminding to cue the shoulders away from the ears. Okay, turning out, single leg frog, or half a frog leg. And again, I've got that wobbly, wobbly waistline, so I'm gonna really try and get both sides of my waist equally long here, and then equally weighted through both hips. Okay, I'm gonna put both feet back in one more time just to kind of get myself zipped up again for um, a final about five frog legs here. Feeling the inseams of the legs coming together, zipping up into that kind of nice pelvic floor tightening feeling. Good, and then we're gonna bring the legs back to parallel. Both feet in again. And we're gonna do a little assisted sort of leg lower here. So getting into abs again, reaching the legs away, or abs a little bit more. Reaching the legs away and down, just as far as you can control. I like the exhale on the way down and inhaling on the way up. We'll just do one more here. Good, okay. Taking the strap away, or the band away. Um, we're gonna come into quadruped next. Um, I was gonna, I was playing with doing this one. It does require making a knot in your band. If you feel okay with that and a longer band is gonna probably feel better. Um, I'll show you and you can either do it or you can go bandless. But basically you're gonna make a little knot in here with a loop for your foot. So you want it to be a big enough loop that you can get your foot through there. We're gonna do basically a little bit of bird dog with some resistance. Okay, so we're gonna get that uh, band on your left foot, come into your quadruped position, and you're gonna hold the band in your right hand. 
Um, I recommend wrapping in if you've got enough uh, room on your band. And then try to get, so you can kind of like pin it with your palm down. <clears throat> and so you have this sort of crossbody thing happening here already, which is a lot of times what we think about when we are doing our bird dog or pointed dog anyway. So let's go ahead and get our position all nice and strong, puffing up between the shoulder blades, um, pulling the belly in, and then elongating through the spine, spiraling the elbows backward. We're gonna reach the left foot back. And then when we feel like we're pretty square here, we're just gonna lift it up and put it right back down and slide it back in. And again, reaching back, little reach up, floating the heel, back down and return. And again. And return. And return, and we're gonna reach back and we're gonna hold uh, with the leg floated up. We're gonna turn it out. We're gonna do little pulses up. So try to keep those hips still square, both hip points pointed straight down toward the floor. Little pulses. Last one, and then turn it back to parallel. We're gonna open the uh, leg slightly out to the side and then bring it back to the midline. And again, a little open and return. And open, return, open, return. Two more. Good, and bringing it back in. Okay. Hmm. Take these over to the other side. So once again, you're gonna to wanna to wrap in now with your left hand. Try to pin the uh, band down with your palm on the mat. Oop, I'm gonna scoot forward a little bit, there we go. Alrighty, and then finding your posture once more, that perfect elongated, puffed up posture. And then we're gonna press that heel back. Find your symmetry here. And then a little float of the heel up. Tap it down and bring it back in. And reach it back, float it up, tap it down, bring it in. And each time that heel floats up, we're pulling the belly button in a little bit further to guard against any unwanted uh, bowing of the back, that low back. I'm also thinking about really trying to keep my waistline equally long on each side again. Lifting up, we're gonna hold, turn it out, little pulses. Three, two, and one. Turning back to parallel, reaching out to the side and returning. So only going so far as you can keep yourself in a truly parallel position here and not let your hips go cattywampus to the side. We don't want hiking of that hip at all. Two more. Good, and coming back in. You can take your knot out, and hopefully it can come out easily. We're gonna come into kneeling, high kneeling next. So I like this high kneeling position um, for so many reasons that Zena has espoused over the years. <laughs> Pressing the hips open in front, so the glutes are really on. You can get a little bit of that quad stretch if, you, if you're tight in there. <clears throat> and then we can stack everything on top really nicely. And so we're just going to get a little bit of shoulder upper back work going here. So pre um, placing the band kind of across your lap there and holding near your hips. Similar to what we did with the band on the floor, um, we're going to roll those shoulders back 
turn the palms a little bit forward, and then we're just gonna reach back a little bit and return. And then again, rotate the palms forward, pull it back, and return. Working hard to maintain that nice length through the spine. I'm so guilty of hyperextending my elbows on all of these things. I'm going to try really hard not to. We'll do one more here. I also feel like, I don't know, I always wind up cueing a lot of the clients here that um, not to pinch off the spine back here as we're doing these, but instead to draw the shoulder blades together and keep equally wide through your back as your chest so that you kind of have this feeling of centered mass <clears throat> through your through your torso here okay oh my gosh what's the next one? <laughs> oh yes okay so we're gonna um, next put the band on the floor and you're gonna be in a sort of a split kneeling stance so we're gonna put the left knee down first and you're gonna want more band on the right side in that case. Placing the knee down on top of the band, you're gonna grab the slack part with your left hand. So the right foot is forward, left knee down, and your band is coming through your like midsection here. And you're gonna hold and wrap in your left. Okay, everybody in there? It's a puzzle. Okay, and then you're gonna take the band on the outside of your elbow. So you've got sort of this Z pattern happening here, elongated Z. Okay, now this one is sort of like, um, I forget what this one is called on the reformer. Overhead. overhead, yes. So we are gonna be reaching overhead. However, this one we're gonna try to get the elbow to still point straight forward. Um, and we're gonna get this by dropping the shoulder blade down the back and reaching up and back down. The reason I like this weird um, kind of cross-haired <laughs> position of the band is because it kind of makes everything feel like it's coming closer together and it just guides the elbow a little bit straight forward. Um, if the straightforward motion is not great for your clients. I imagine you could still do this one out to the side here like this. Um, yes. So again, that feeling of sort of down to go up, um, like a pulley system. Last one here. Good, and then we'll go over to the other side. I should say the last time I taught this, I had everybody pause in like a uh, the split kneeling stance for a stretch here too, because this is like a really nice opportunity to do that one too, where you're sort of just pressing through the hips to get that hip flexor open again. Just a note. Okay, wrapping in. Once again, you've got that band coming through kind of your inner thigh part here, and then out through the outside of your elbow, and we're reaching up and coming back down. So dropping the elbow down, or dropping the shoulder blade down to let the elbow come up. And for some reason, my right elbow really wants to go out to the side and I'm not gonna let it be. We'll do two more here. Good, okay. This is also a great spot to do salute. So we'll do this kneeling also. You could of course do, these, uh, do that one standing, do this one standing. We're gonna take this right around um, that kind of broad spot in your back, right kind of where your bra strap would hit or your Shoulder blades come into play. <clears throat> I like to wrap in, take the fingertips together in front, 
And I do tend to give people an option of where they want to start and, and end with their hands. Um, I like this upward diagonal trajectory. Um, but I like to give people an option as far as like whether they start at their forehead or maybe down by their mouth if they feel like that um, angle, that degree of angle is too much. So pulling that belly in and feeling a little bit of work trying to stabilize against that pressure through your hands. Two more. Okay. And then, da, da, da. if you come around this way, actually this one isn't one that I did, but we can try it. Um, your queen arms. So probably coming inward would feel better. So scooping, taking the band right behind your back and then scooping the fingertips upward, dropping the shoulder blades down the back. And I like to take this opportunity to kind of draw the belly in and press back into the band as it's pressing inward, kind of creating that sort of filling out feeling in the uh, low to mid back. Last one here. Okay. And then I attempted something sort of like a reverse arm here. It's a little funny because it's coming forward, but what that looked like was kind of having the band across your hamstrings. I'm trying to wrap them. And then palms forward, um, kind of pressing straight forward from there and then returning. And again, trying to have that sort of down to reach forward, down the back to reach forward feeling. Two more. Good. Of course, we could do a million more of those, but I wanted to get to some standing work too. Um, so let's come up to standing. And we're going to do a little bit of squatting and a little bit of rowing work up here. Um, and so I guess let's first take your squat unweighted. So just having your band in your, ha band in your hand. Uh, taking your feet about hip distance apart, maybe a little turnout, and just taking your free squat. So shifting your hips back, bending or uh, hinging at the hips, pulling the belly in, getting nice and long through your back, and then firing up the glutes to come right back up. So just noticing how that feels just with your own body weight against gravity or with gravity. One more here. And then we're gonna go ahead and try this with the feet on the band, similar to how we started. Okay. <clears throat> so getting your feet again, about hip distance apart or so, maybe a little wrap in of the hands. And um, as you can see here, we're going to be going with the band on the way down and against it on the way up. So just adding a little extra work um, on the way up um, and maybe a little more control on the way down. So same idea. And this also creates a really nice opportunity to work the shoulder blade retraction um, using those rhomboids to kind of pull back and the lats engaged and everything. So let's start there, hinging at the hip, sitting back. 
and coming right back up. And so there is that point, of course, where you come out of the um, tension of the band. You can keep going past that and then shoot yourself right back up, squeeze the glutes at the top, and then coming down again. Coming all the way down and squeezing back up. Good. We've got five more. Good. Coming down again. We're going to come just to the point where the band, we come out of the tension of the band here. We're going to do some rowing. So pulling that belly in and getting really long through the spine, keeping the head in line with the spine. We're going to pull the elbows back and return. So just starting there. Working hard to keep those shoulders back. Working hard to keep those feet in contact with the floor, even the pinky toes. And then we're going to pull back and we're going to hold and we can do some triceps here. Last one. Good, I'm coming up and out of that. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. But um, one other thing that we can do with your squat is to band your squat. So again, a little bit of resistance on the rotation. And so what that would look like would be to band here, tie another fun knot in here. But hopefully you can find something that works there. Um, and I'm just going to use a little bit of tension for myself, again, because I tend to get pulled out of place really easily. Um, but you could go as strong as you wanted to. And we're going to really turn the knees out over the toes as we come down into our turn out squat. And come right back up again. I've also been cueing people who have trouble with this squat motion and wanting to hunch to take their hands behind their back, clasp them, and reach the knuckles downward. Three more. Good. You could even get really excited and do crab walks here, but I won't make you all do that. We all know how those work, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so let's just finish maybe by giving our glutes a little bit of a stretch, coming down onto the mat. And I like to remind people in the figure four stretch to be sure that their waist is equally long on each side so they're not hiking up one hip into their waistline. Just because that, I feel like, gives you a little um, clearer stretch, more targeted stretch. And I also like to give the pe people the option to do this one with the knees completely crossed. Switching to the other side. Mm 
Okay, and coming out. That's it. Any questions or anything? Comments, things you hated? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. That was great. Got some really good tips. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. It's, um, it's always good to have more options. There's so many things to build on from there. If you, like, this is a theme you like, maybe one of us could pick it up and keep going with it. It's great to use the band for resistance. So the reason that, I mean, you make things more difficult, but also the other reason to add resistance, especially for the upper body, is for people who aren't strong enough to actually plank yet, but they need to get that upper body strength. So any of your um, older people who might have osteoporosis or other things where resistance work is key for them. This is a great way to integrate it without having them doing handstands and planks and all that, uh, all that kind of activity where they have to actually wait there through all the way. So um, even for the legs, some of them won't be able to squat quite like that, but you could do all the lying down work like Genevieve was showing you with the band against your legs. So, so good for strengthening, good for bone strength, and different than weights themselves because of the resistance in two directions. So. I think they provide, and also the feedback you get when you have the band wrapped around your back. So if, for example, like Jenny was cueing you to push back into the band as you're scooping upward, um, those are great cues to get the alignment right, so to keep you on a better posture. Yes? Great. Well, we hope to see you all again next week. Same time, same place. <laughs> Tell your friends. We'd love to have more people join our group or send us messages. We've been getting quite a lot of messages even from people who can't be here on the day of, so hopefully just spreading the word and sharing more. And if you know people who want to share, also let them know. We'd love to have more. So. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.